stocktrades.com. Today we have a new and special guest with us, Matt Gilly. Matt is CEO of Nevada Copper, which can be traded as NCU on the TSX. Nevada Copper is the first new U.S. copper project to commence production in the last decade. And uh, we've been following the junior mining sector and especially in the U.S., uh, where we've been seeing copper and its, and its uh, crucial uh, impact on the electric vehicle and in the United States, and we've seen this with uranium and the rare earths and copper now. Uh, the first new U.S. copper project to start production in the last decade. Thank you, Matt, CEO of Nevada Copper, for being here with us today. Thank you, Jeb. It's my pleasure. Matt, let's talk about the starting of production um, at Pumpkin Hollow. What does this mean for U.S. investors? Why is it such a crucial milestone that U.S. investors who are concerned about copper supply, especially from in, in the United States, why they should be uh, concerned, uh, interested in this news? All right, well, Jeb. Okay, that's a okay. That's a that's a that's a great question. There's two there's two parts to your question, really. And the first first, I'll just touch on uh, Pumpkin Hollow itself in Nevada Copper. Look, this is a, a hugely exciting milestone for Nevada Copper. We are now producing concentrate. This is uh, this is what we've been working on for the last 16 months since we announced our construction decision on the Pumpkin Hollow underground. And it just again, I can't stress how how um, exciting a time it is here at the site. This, uh, why, why is this important to Pumpkin Hollow in Nevada Copper? So, so the chief asset, the assets of Nevada Copper are the, are the Pumpkin Hollow district. And in that area, we have the underground deposit, which, which like I said, we just brought on to production over the weekend. We have the adjacent open pit, which is a much larger deposit. Uh, you know, the majority of the nav sits within the open pit. And I'll, t- I'll tell you about where we're heading with that open pit in just a moment. And then we have the regional uh, land package of over 22,000 acres, which we are um, exploring as we speak. Yearington being a historic copper mining district, there was a, a, a one of Anaconda's major mines, the Yearington Mine, operated in the 50s, 60s, and 70s here in the valley. And so we are in a copper-producing district, and we're, this is really the re, re-, re-, re- the the reintroduction of copper back into the Earrington district, and we're very pleased by this. And there's the, you know, of course, the benefits of first mover advantage, the, the benefits of, of being, you know, the first one in line, the benefits of developing a copper project in a relatively low copper price environment so that we have the, the best access to skills, to service providers, to supplies, and really can very competitively bring the project online. So that's the overall arching. Why is this time so exciting for Nevada Copper? Um, when you talk about uh, the copper industry in the United States, again, this is very exciting in, in that you, this, is, this is the first new mine in 10 years. It tells you about the supply side of the supply demand curve, and that is it's, it's hard to bring new mines online. It's hard to make investment decisions in relatively low copper price environments. Nevada Copper is blessed with a very low-risk property. We are entirely on private land. We have no waters of the state. We have uh, excellent relationships with our communities. This has just allowed us to be able to execute in a low copper price environment so that we are now poised. As you see copper prices rising right now, we are coming into production, and this is the optimal time to be able to come onto production as the copper prices are rising. So maybe you could highlight for us that are new to the story the economics that you've you've already done studies on that this could even operate in a lower price copper. We all know that copper is beginning to break out now, but even in a lower price uh, environment, this could be successful. 
Oh, of course, of course, Jeff. I mean, you can you can go through our technical reports and our press releases to get that fine detail. The the corporate presentation on our website uh, lays that all out in, in in quite granular detail. But just from a nutshell, right? We we are uh, set up to produce at a dollar eighty six a pound once we reach commercial production. And this is a this is a very competitive price. This is a very uh, a price that we can that we we can meet in most any scenario. And so, really, uh, we're pleased to be coming online now, and that's all just that's just all making our job that much easier. Talk to us, Matt. It's pretty exciting when you hear uh, how a company has gone through in just 16 months. You know I, that I've been following uh, since you've come on board, and uh, you know the transformation of the company and the project and getting this into production. You said it's so hard to get a new copper mine into production. So if you could highlight the team and some of the great work that's been done over the past 16 months. Oh, of course, Jim. So, so how do you, how do you bring a mine online and from the, from the construction decision to now 16 months? Uh, so look, the, the company uh, had gone through some hard times as many other companies had gone through and was really resurrected at the end of 2017, the beginning of 2018, the the balance sheet was consolidated, the debt was consolidated, and this was the this was the launch of the of the new Nevada Copper. That started off with a uh, new board of directors. You'll see uh, you know names like Tom Albanese and Ernie Nutter and and uh, Lucio Benefacio on our board of directors. You will then see a new management team. That's when I came into the company in May of 2018 uh, with myself and with Rich, and we brought in a new CFO and a new, a new commercial officer. We had a new head, a senior vice president of operations. All these people came together in 2018 to really form the team that, that could execute the construction of the underground and really advance that project. And in September of last year, we launched on the construction decision, raised the funds on the market, in order for us to be fully funded and and just executed, and this is this was important for Nevada Copper. Showed credibility. Shows we we do what we say we're going to do, and now we are um, producing mine. One of the things, recent events that um, my uh, viewers were interested in is that Rio Tinto's made a decision to invest uh, in in the U.S. and we've seen this rise of resource nationalism and places like Mongolia and, and the DRC and uh, in South America, we're seeing a lot of protests and a lot of geopolitical uncertainty and, you know, jurisdictional risk is becoming more of an issue with copper. I'm wondering if you could comment on some of these recent developments and what investors should be aware of when it comes to copper investment and geopolitical risk, jurisdictional risk. All right. Well, that's a good question. I, you know, and certainly uh, don't pretend to have any insight into decisions made by specific uh, other specific companies like Rio Tinto. But I can just tell you from the the general overview. Anytime you're making a investment decision, and in 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 facts of the matter are that in a in a mine, the investment decision usually requires a massive amount of capital. Anytime you're making an investment decision, it's all about risk reward. And one of the risks that are in, 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 that are extremely important in your analysis are the jurisdictional risks. Uh, luckily for Nevada Copper, Nevada has what Fraser Institute considers to be the number one mining jurisdiction in the world right now, in that it is a relatively low risk environment. The uh, the markets are friendly to Nevada. The communities are friendly to Nevada. The state is friendly to mining in Nevada. And it is it is just a really good place to operate. So this this all goes into your investment criteria when you're looking at how you're going to invest. It does show you know uh, other other companies recognize the value that um, a Western United States site has with regards to risk mitigation, and that's really one of our strategic advantages at Nevada Copper is we are a low risk operating environment. Could you highlight what? Uh, your shareholder base, uh, the quality of their your following and shareholder base that has gotten you to this point where you've started production. 
Of course, of course. So, look, uh, approximately 87% of our shares are held by institutions. So the, there's two uh, private equity groups that hold just over 50% combined, and that's a group called Pala and a group called Castle Lake. The remainder of our institutional shareholders are generally London-based mining funds. Uh, names you would know, you know, BlackRock, Fidelity, J.P. Morgan, names like that. And, and that forms the basis for our shareholders. So what we have is a, a group of people that, that absolutely see the, the vision for copper long term, see the shortage of supply for new operations coming online. They're very, they're very steady and solid and long term shareholders, and that's really allowed us to be very uh, effective in what is, you know, not a particularly what well what wasn't that particularly robust to copper price, to allow us to be successful and again bring this copper mine online during uh, during a rise in copper prices. So Nevada Copper CEO Matt Gilley, uh, you can get more information, of course, at NevadaCopper.com. Production was targeted for Q4 2019, and uh, we just heard news today that that has been met, and it looks like 2020 could be a breakout year for the copper price, possibly, uh, and possibly, you know, the first new copper mine in production in the U.S. in 10 years. Matt, is there anything else that you would like to include before we end the interview? Uh, well, Jay, uh, it's great to talk to you again. Just want to reiterate that the underground is just the beginning. The next big prize is the open pit. We'll have the feasibility study complete by the end of next year, along with a funding solution that will be presented to the board of directors for a construction decision. The details of the PFS are all available on the website. Uh, and then, of course, the regional exploration. Uh, this, is, this is a land of copper, and we're very pleased to have such a large land package right in the heart of a very historic mining district. Mm -hmm.